Admission. The zoo. Admit one. The new zoo. Allowed. One guest. That's what the ticket read. On the back were directions on how to get to the new zoo. My best friend Alex had found it, walking to school that morning, and had waited until recess to show me. We were only in third grade, but we knew that most of the spelling was wrong. I, who was as cynical as an eight-year-old can be, was positive that this was some kind of trick. It was probably written by a fifth grader to prank us. I said, "They always do that this time of year." At our school, when the school year was coming to an end, it wasn't uncommon for fifth graders to play tricks. The pranks here were usually harmless. One year, they filled the teachers' lounge with balloons, and if they were careful. They didn't get in trouble. Alex, however, had ten times my enthusiasm and none of my skepticism. He loved zoos, from massive state-run parks to tiny petting zoos at the county fair, and he was willing to risk it. Come on. You never want to try anything new, even if it is a prank. At least we'll be able to do something fun tonight. It was Friday, and every Friday night we had a sleepover at either my or his house. It was fun, but even sleepovers become boring if you have them often enough. As much as I doubted the zoo's existence. I was still a little put off by the spelling. Alex had won me over before recess ended. We told our parents that we were going to have a campout in the forest behind our houses, where, according to the ticket, the zoo was located. After begging and promising to come straight home if we had any problems. We got their permission. Armed with our yellow tent, sleeping bags, eight pounds of junk food, thick jackets, and one ticket to the new zoo, we set out into the forest. After pitching our tent, we pulled on our jackets. Filled our backpacks with food and flashlights, and started following the directions on the ticket. Alex was completely focused and never said a word. I trekked behind him, growing more and more worried. The further we walked into the woods, the directions on the ticket I'd included were. Too detailed and precise to have been done by fifth graders. Still, I doubted the existence of a new zoo. At least, until we got there. The ticket's directions led us right up to a tall wooden gate. It was twice the height of an adult. And as wide as a garage door, lights were shining behind it, giving the whole thing a golden aura. A sign hung from the gate, written in the same writing, and bad spelling, as the ticket. Please give ticket to ticket window. We looked left. And saw a small hut. There was no window to speak of, but there was a speaker and a button. I didn't want to approach it. I had a terrible feeling about this place. Alex, either not sharing my feelings or 
hiding them very well, walked up to the hut and pushed the button. Welcome to the zoo! An overly enthusiastic voice yelled through the intercom, making both of us jump. Alex, recovering quickly, pushed the button again. Hi! Uh, my friend and I found this ticket. Can we go in? Of course! Leave your ticket on the counter. I'll open the gate. Have fun and stay as long as you want. I promise that you've never seen a zoo like ours. Alex set the ticket on the counter, grinned smugly at me, and turned towards the gate as it opened, Jurassic Park style. He grabbed my hand and dragged me in. Our jaws dropped when we saw inside. The entire zoo was an indoor pavilion the size of a football stadium, with lampposts and palm trees lining the walkways and a skylight showing a gorgeous night sky. The walls were painted a reflective white, and the walkways were made of rainbow-colored cobblestones. But the most eye-catching were the animals. I had never seen anything like them. There were tall creatures that looked like giraffes combined with sauropods that had floppy, rabbit-like ears. There were chattering creatures the size of basketballs that looked like apples with spider legs. There were electric green lions with six legs, dolphin tails, and unicorn horns. There were many creatures that I simply can't describe with words. We went from enclosure to enclosure, gazing in awe and occasional terror at these amazing creatures. But the further we went into the zoo, the more I felt that things were very wrong. Finally, I told Alex that I had to go to the bathroom. He barely looked away from the giraffe sauropod, telling me to hurry back. I went back the way we'd come, trying not to run or look as scared as I felt. Alex, in his excitement, hadn't noticed that there weren't any windows, or that we were the only people at the zoo, which, if it was a real zoo, would attract tourists by the thousands due to the sheer amount of weird animals. I hadn't even seen any employees. I eventually found the exit, pushed my way through the doors, which were a lot heavier than they looked, and decided to wait for Alex outside. He was bound to notice that I wasn't there and come looking for me, right? Right? Ten minutes went by. Then, twenty. I looked at the ticket window. Maybe the person inside could tell Alex to come out? I looked at my digital watch. We'd been there for two hours. They probably wouldn't want us spending too much time there, right? I thought that this was sound logic and went to the ticket window. Welcome to the zoo! The second I pressed the button, the overly enthusiastic voice roared to life. Um, hi, it's me again. Could you tell my friend to come out now? It's time to go home. Of course! Leave your ticket on the counter. I'll open the gate. Have fun and stay as long as you want. I promise that you've never seen a zoo like ours. What? 
Uh, I, I asked you to, to make my friend leave. I pressed the button again. Welcome to the zoo! This time, I said nothing, attempting to process what was happening. The voice repeated what it had said a few seconds ago, telling me that it would open the already opened gates and that I should enjoy myself. I realized that I hadn't been talking to a person at all, just a recording. But who recorded it? And who opened the gates? I felt a prickling sensation on my spine. I whirled around, suddenly feeling that I was being watched. I wanted to get out of there, and every instinct I had was screaming at me to run. But I couldn't leave Alex. He didn't know. But when I took a step towards the gates, the ground started to shake. I, I heard static and turned towards the ticket window. The voice was back, but it didn't sound friendly. Thank you for visiting the zoo. Be warned, you may never want to leave. I screamed Alex's name, wanting to run in and grab him. But even if my feet hadn't been frozen, the ground was shaking so hard I would have fallen before I'd taken a step. Less than a minute later, I saw a tiny shape running for the gates. Alex. For a moment, my heart leapt. He'd make it. He'd escape. Then, the gates started to close. I saw the wild terror in his eyes as they slammed in his face. I... I never saw him again. An awful smell started to fill the air, like a hundred worn-out engines backfired at once. The shaking was getting worse. I was knocked flat on my back. I screamed Alex's name. Not ten feet away from me, the ticket booth burst into flames. As if detonated by remote, a horrible, deafening roar filled my ears. I jammed my hands over them, but it barely helped. Dust began to fly into the air, stinging my eyes. But I didn't look away. I couldn't. As I laid, petrified in shock and terror, the entire zoo rose from the ground, blasting off like the rocket it really was. A blast of blue flames emitted from underneath it illuminating the surrounding forest. It shot straight into the air, taking Alex with it as it soared off into space. According to the government, a weather balloon had gotten away from a nearby weather station and had exploded when a startled hunter shot it from its campsite. No one believed my story, as I was hysterical and yelling that Alex had been taken. Over twenty years later, and they still don't believe me, Alex remains a missing person to this day. <laughs>